Welcome, welcome. We are back with another What I Ate in a Day to Lose Weight. Now, I know you guys absolutely love these videos and I really enjoy food and cooking, so it's a perfect opportunity to share a few of the recipes that I used to love when I was losing weight, but I still eat quite regularly now. In today's video, I'm not just gonna show you the recipes, but I also wanted to give you a little bit more information alongside it in terms of how you can optimize your diet when you're trying to lose weight and you're in a calorie deficit. The idea when you're losing weight is to try and make eating in a calorie deficit as easy as possible for you you and you only. Your circumstances are going to be completely different to everybody else's. So it needs to work for you so that you can eat in a calorie deficit consistently and for a good amount of time. So I'm not just going to show you the recipes in this video, but I'm going to also explain why they also might be optimal for a calorie deficit. I really want to stress the point that eating in a calorie deficit looks completely different for everyone. So in this video, the recipes are there to give you a little bit of inspo, some ideas for some different meals. Whereas the information around it is there to illustrate that it is an individual learning process that's always going to be changing and working out a way of eating regarding your individual circumstances like your lifestyle your hunger levels and your preferences is really really important also on a quick side note I'm actually going to mention calories in this video I don't usually talk about calories because when I lost weight I didn't actually track any calories or aim for a certain amount I simply reduced my portions made some simple switches and then gradually worked from there However, I do often get comments asking how many calories are in the recipes I make, and I also think it's important to be able to illustrate that you can eat normal, fulfilling, and enjoyable foods and still be in a calorie deficit. So I will be talking about the total amount of calories in each meal, so if this is going to stress you in any way, please, please feel free to switch this video off. I have lots of other what I eat in a days which don't mention calories at all and you can head over there. I will put some down below. So anyway, let's get straight into the video. We're gonna start with obviously breakfast, probably, mm, yeah, probably my favorite meal of the day, although it constantly changes. Now for me, having a big meal at the beginning of the day is really beneficial in terms of staving off hunger later on in the day, filling me up and just really starting my day right. So for me, breakfast is usually one of the biggest meals of the day. Now what I want from my breakfast meal is I want to feel full and I want to really enjoy the food that I'm having. So firstly, I try to consider what do I really want? And I often want something a little bit sweeter in the morning. And then I make sure that it's nice and filling for me. Now, there's a couple of ways that I would usually do that. And a huge one in my diet is volume eating. And you may have heard of this before, but essentially what it is, is eating high volume and low calorie foods as part of your diet. This way, you are actually eating in terms of the amount of volume a lot of food but you're still going to be getting the same amount of calories now often high volume low calorie foods are going to be things like fruit and vegetables so you'll see a lot of that in my diet but the good news is personally i absolutely love fruit and vegetables so it's like a win-win for me so for my breakfast in this video i'm going to be making overnight oat pots and you'll see how i add lots of food in in terms of keeping me nice and full i try to get lots of fat and fiber or protein in. Now in this meal, you're gonna see plenty of fat and fiber. On the flip side, there are some people that wake up and they are not hungry in the morning at all. And that is totally fine. This is where I'm talking about how it's individual to you. If you wake up and you're just not hungry, there's no point in necessarily forcing it. So in that circumstance, you may want to skip a breakfast meal and have a slightly larger lunch and dinner, or maybe a few more snacks throughout the day. Again, it's totally individual. So overnight oat breakfast pot, let's go. Okay, so annoyingly when I came to edit this video, I found that the breakfast footage had corrupted, but it's okay because it's pretty much the easiest meal in this video that I can explain without having to show you. So I started with the overnight oats, which you can see at the bottom of the glass jar. That is simply one third a cup of oats and one half a cup of milk of your choice, put in the fridge overnight with a little bit of maple syrup and just left. And then I basically just filled it with all the different toppings that I fancied. So I had some coconut yogurt, I had some frozen raspberries, I had a banana, some Belvita biscuits, some mixed nuts, and also the maple syrup skinny syrup. So all I did was take the oats out of the fridge after they'd been in there overnight, and I just topped it with all the toppings in whatever order I fancied. What I really love about this is that you can change the flavors up every single day. You can have different fruits, different toppings, different sauces, and you can just make it what you fancy. Okay, so that was the overnight oats breakfast pot. Now I did track the calories for that one, and in total, the calories came out to 511 calories. If you're interested in macros, that had 10.2 grams of protein, 14.2 grams of fat, and 88 grams of carbs. So very high in carbs, but I'm a carb girl, I love carbs, and I still feel really, really full from that meal, so that's perfect for me. 
There are definitely ways that you could pump up the protein in this one. I just didn't feel like it in this video, but you could add protein powder. Obviously what you're adding into your pot, you could make up, so you could add some peanut butter, you could add a bit of protein bar that's crushed up. There's loads and loads of different options. But for me today, it was just really fruit, the Belvita biscuits, some yogurt, and the overnight oats. Additionally, on a side note, because of my skin, I don't eat dairy, but if you added, for example, Greek yogurt, that would also have a higher protein content. Okay, so on to lunch. Now, inevitably, if you're thinking about weight loss and you're talking about calorie deficits, you're going to hear protein come up a lot. And the main reason that we say it's important to consider protein or make sure you prioritize protein is mainly because it's more satiating. It just fills you up a little bit more. So you're not gonna be thinking about food constantly. You'll stay fuller for longer. And that's always gonna be a good thing when you're trying to reduce how much you're eating. Additionally, and I've mentioned this in a few other videos, but it's not really that significant. But it has a slightly higher thermic effect of feeding, which just means that your body's gonna be using a little bit more energy to digest and use it. So that is why we talk about prioritizing protein and the importance of protein for weight loss. And in terms of a specific number, there are numbers that are given to you in terms of how many grams per body weight. However, I want to stress to you that when I was losing weight, I knew none of this. My knowledge about nutrition was literally zero. So I didn't even consider protein until I became a personal trainer. And by that point, I'd been training, resistance training and calisthenics for a good two years and I'd lost weight about three or four years prior to that. So we're talking a good four years of not knowing anything about prioritizing protein and for a good part of that I was mainly plant-based for my skin so I wasn't getting a huge amount of protein. So I'm going to go ahead and say if you are just starting out try not to stress too much about protein. Instead of trying to hit a certain amount of protein just think about prioritizing it and trying to get it into your meals. Now another thing that's often overlooked in terms of eating in a calorie deficit is thinking about optimizing meals rather than restricting them. Traditionally, when we reduce what we eat, we start thinking about what we can cut out, what we can get rid of. But instead of that, try to alternate your thinking and think about how can I optimize this meal? What can I add to this meal? That's gonna either keep me fuller for longer, it's gonna keep me more satisfied, or it's gonna add nutrients to the meal. I still ate and still do eat the foods that I would like to, and I don't necessarily look at something and think I can't eat that because it's unhealthy. I will still go ahead and have it, but what I will do is try to optimize it to the best of my ability. So I will see what I can add, which might make it a little bit more filling. And then maybe in the big scheme of things, I'll eat slightly less of it, or I start to think about how I can bulk it out with things that are gonna be more optimal for my diet. So in my lunchtime meal, I'm gonna make one of my favorite things, which is a filled bagel. I love bagels. In fact, I had the most incredible recipe for homemade bagels that I made the other day, and they're so good. So I'll try and link it down below if I can find it. But the ones in this recipe are shop walk because we went through all those other ones. But I'm gonna be making a filled bagel, and I'm gonna make it with chicken, bacon, lettuce, tomato, and I'm gonna add hummus. So I've added the hummus and I've added a little bit of bacon. Now that might seem a little counterintuitive if you're trying to eat in a calorie deficit, but what I'm thinking about is bulking that out. So I'm not gonna be so hungry later on the day. I might not snack as much, or maybe I'll make some better choices at dinner, but also I'm going to enjoy my food as well. And the additional benefit is we've got a good amount of chicken and we've got some bacon in there. So we're gonna get some protein. And then we've also got protein and fat in the hummus. So it's gonna fill us up keep us full for longer, and we're gonna be able to enjoy it as well. And of course, we're throwing all those veggies in there. So bacon, chicken, hummus, bagel, let's go. Okay, so I might be a little bit weird, but I like my tomato to be warm sometimes, especially in a sandwich. So I cut a few slices of tomato to start with and just threw them into a fry pan. While I was doing that, I took 25 grams of chicken and I just cut it up into three small pieces and then threw that in the saucepan afterwards to fry off. I also forgot to show you, but at the moment I have two pieces of bacon in the grill as well cooking. So now I'm gonna start assembling the bagel while that all cooks. So I took a bagel thin, I toasted it, and now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of hummus to one side of it. It's just plain hummus, and I'm just gonna spread it over nice and thick. Now I'm gonna start adding my salad in, so I'm just gonna put a heap of crunchy lettuce on there. This is just iceberg lettuce. We're gonna chuck our tomato on top as well and add a little bit of seasoning. I actually added some garlic and it was quite nice. It was just garlic powder. And I also put one tablespoon of hummus on the other bagel side, as you can see. So in total, it's two tablespoons of hummus. And then I'm just gonna pile up that chicken, add my bacon on top as well. This is looking so good. Obviously season it as you wish, but that is pretty much it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salad on the side like I do with literally everything, and some salsa, and I'll show you the salsa in the dinner recipe. But yum, that is it. It was so good, I had to eat it straight away. 
Okay, so that was our bagel lunch. Now that had 34.8 grams of protein, 13.4 grams of fat, and 26.8 grams of carbs. And in total, it had 389 calories. I bet you didn't think it would only have 389 calories. It had less calories in than breakfast. So that's a good example of how you can have a decent amount of tasty, yummy food, and it's still going to be giving you some protein, giving you some fats, keeping you fuller for longer, and you can enjoy your food. And that being said, we are moving on to dinner. And one thing that I always chirp on about, you guys probably heard me say this so many times, is try to still enjoy the foods that you enjoy. You want consistency, so you don't want to be going completely insane, cutting out everything that you love and trying to grit your teeth and bear it, because that kind of determination is only gonna last so long. So personally, I love Mexican food. I love fajitas, I love quesadillas. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I love burritos, I love tacos, I love nachos. Nachos, I love everything. So I thought we would make some tacos. Now, traditionally, I would make these with some mints, either some chicken mints or usually beef mints, and I'd have all the sour cream and all the bits to go with it. And I'm still going to have that, but I'm gonna switch out the protein source. I'm gonna switch it for fish. Now, fish to me is one of the wonder proteins. It's super high in protein content in comparison to its calorie content. And also, if you just buy it from the freezer in the supermarket, it's pretty cheap in comparison to chicken and beef and pork and lamb. You would have seen in one of my recent videos that one of my go-to snacks or lunches is tuna bruschetta because tuna is just so quick and easy. And again, it's low calorie, it's high protein, it's just so much bang for your buck. So in tonight's dinner, I'm switching out the protein sources. So instead of beef tacos, we're having fish tacos, which honestly, I think tastes better, to be honest with you. Alongside that, I'm gonna have all the dressings, the whole shebang. Honestly, the main changes in this meal is the protein source. However, I also add, again, plenty of volume in terms of veggies and have some salad on the side. And in terms of some of the sauces that I'm having, I mix some higher calorie ones with some lower calorie ones. So I will try and show you that as well. One last thing that I do is instead of just having one big taco or two big tacos, I actually make mini ones and that just tricks my brain into thinking that I'm having a little bit more to eat. But not only that, it takes me a little bit longer to eat as well because I just sort of eat, put it down, eat, put it down. And that in itself makes me eat a little bit slower. It takes about 20 minutes for your stomach to be able to fully signal to your brain that you're full. So to me, that's a beneficial thing because I'm eating slower and then I will stop if I'm full or I'll know to eat a little bit more. So let's go and make some fish tacos which are optimized for our calorie deficit, but still just as delicious. So we're going to start this recipe by preparing the salsa fresca. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the official word for it. I'll put it on the screen so you guys can check it out. I just don't want to completely butcher it. But what we're going to do is add into a bowl two chopped tomatoes, a chopped white onion, a good old handful of chopped jalapenos, and a good squeeze of lime juice, a little bit of salt, bit of coriander and just mix it all together. Super easy, chuck it in the fridge and that is ready to go. Now we're gonna start making the taco seasoning for our fish. Now this is super easy. We're just gonna mix in a bowl, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of cumin. And then you're just gonna grab your fish out. I got mine from the freezer. It's a little bit cheaper, and it doesn't go off as well, which is fantastic. And then what we're gonna do is brush a little bit of olive oil on it, and then just rub some of that taco seasoning on it. Wrap up the fillet in a little bit of alfoil, and then just pop it into a pan. And essentially, we're just gonna repeat this for the amount of fillets we've got. I just did four because that's what I had left, and it fit in the tray perfectly. Then once you've got them all ready, you're just going to pop them in an oven at 180 degrees Celsius for around 20 to 25 minutes until they're fully cooked through. In the meantime, we're going to make our taco sauce. So we're going to start with half a cup of sour cream and then around a tablespoon of mayonnaise, about a teaspoon of sriracha or however much you want. I have a little bit more because I like it a little bit hotter. Some lime juice and some garlic granules or you can add some fresh garlic. Give that a stir, pop it in the fridge and again, you are good to go. The next topping we're going to prepare is, of course, some avocado. I'm not going to make full-on guacamole, but I'm just going to dice up an avocado that I had. I was actually surprised this one was still ripe. We actually got away with that one here. And then I'm just going to scoop that into a bowl. I added just a little bit of salt and some chili flakes, mixed it all together and popped it aside. I'm now going to cut up a spring onion. Again, I'm just looking for any toppings that I have in my fridge that will taste good. 
And now the fish is nearly ready, so we're gonna get on to preparing the meal. So I'm just gonna take these mini tortillas, I'm just gonna heat them up in a fry pan, you can do it in the microwave or an oven, or just have them cold. And then I'm just gonna start chucking on the toppings. You can really go to town with these because obviously they're just low calorie, high volume foods. There's not really that much in them. So yeah, you can really fill your tacos up. You may also notice I've snuck in some charred sweet corn at the top. I actually did that in the fry pan straight from the tin while I was cooking the fish. That's why the fry pan looked like it already had something in it when I did the tacos. Now there is so much food here, so there is plenty of food left over for an entire another portion or for somebody else as well. And this is the finished product. I'm adding a little bit of salad and this salsa on the side. Now this is basically my alternative for tomato ketchup. It's like five calories per tablespoon. It tastes really good when you get used to it and it goes perfectly with Mexican. And voila, we are done. Okay, I love that meal so much, it's so good. But here are the numbers. That was a total of 491 calories. It had 21.1 .1 grams of protein, 20.5 grams of fat, and 57.8 grams of carbs. So a decent amount of protein, 500 calories basically, let's just round it up, it's nice and easy. That's a really decent meal for 500 calories. So for the day in total, we're sitting at around 1400 calories. Now, obviously I can't tell you what a deficit would be. I've got tons and tons of videos on that topic, so it's gonna be completely different for everyone. You can go and check some of those out if you need a little bit more information. When I was filming this and inputting all the calories, I put a completely random number in my head as a very, very average calorie deficit at 1600. Now again, this is different for everyone, so that may be a little bit too low for some people, that might be a little bit too high for some people. I'm just using it as a complete example, so please just take it with a grain of salt. It's just really to illustrate the point. But the total day's eating has come to just under 1400 calories so far. Obviously that doesn't include drinks and snacks or any dessert that you might have as well. So we've got, let's say if we're working off 1600 calories, 200 calories to play with. So in this circumstance, you've got 200 calories for your drinks and snacks. Now, if you drink, for example, black coffee or zero calorie soft drinks, or obviously just water, it's gonna be zero calories, but you do need to take into consideration if you add sugar, if you add milk, if you have different drinks that have calories in, or even if you add juice to your water like I do. So I want to quickly touch on snacks because if you're like me, snacking is probably gonna be one of the most important parts of a day. Like, I'm a snacker. So you can eat in your meals and snack on whatever you want. But again, there may be some things that time to time or dependent on the day are gonna be more optimal. If you're a chocolate lover like me, you might pick up some chocolate to snack on after lunch or after dinner. As an example, this bar is a dark chocolate bar, 74%. So basically two little squares here are 112 calories. Not too bad, very, very tasty. Now this is a perfect snack. If you enjoy chocolate, if it's gonna keep you sane, if you're going to enjoy your coffee a little bit more, if you've got some chocolate on the side, that's perfect. But it's not gonna fill you up very much. So if you find that you're constantly hungry, maybe it's just not the optimal choice. Now what you could do is, add something with it. So you could add it into some yogurt or some cereal or whatever you fancy. Or you could try to make a choice which maybe is a little bit more optimal in terms of higher protein and therefore a little bit more satiating. So to give you an example of something that would be almost the same calories, and again, it's not a substitute, you might prefer this and that is totally okay. I prefer this a lot of the time. But for the same amount of calories, you could have two hard boiled eggs dipped in some sole or whatever you fancy, plenty of protein, super cheap and easy and quite tasty as well. Or you could have a banana and one piece of chocolate. This has got about 75 calories in and then you could have the 35 here. This is definitely gonna fill you up more than this, but if this is gonna keep you sane, then have this. And just a couple of other things to be aware of, and this is something that I used to do all the time, is picking up things that you may think are healthier in substitute for something that you think is less healthy, but actually it's not necessarily beneficial in the long run. So 112 calories for two squares of this. So you could have four squares of this for 224 calories. This is 224 calories and it's a yogurt covered muesli bar. So you would traditionally think, oh, it's a yogurt covered muesli bar. It's gonna be healthier, it's gonna be better. So you might opt for this one and maybe it will be fine and everything's good, but you might eat this and still actually want this. And therefore you end up having this and this, whereas if you just had this in the first place, you might not have needed to eat anything extra. 
Again, I'm just trying to illustrate that there is no right or wrong and day by day, person to person, these things are all gonna look totally different. So it really is about trying to tune in over time and work out what's gonna be best for you. Are you hungry at certain times of the day? Do you need to maybe change the timings of your meals so you have a little bit more volume at a certain time so it keeps you fuller? Or do you need to switch something out if you're having this but you're still finding you're really hungry and then having to eat more or you're finding it hard to stay consistent because you're constantly hungry and so you end up just eating more later on. And maybe every now and again switching that for that might be a good option or trying something completely Completely different. Again, the other option is thinking about how you can add to your meal. As an example, as a carb lover, I snack on anything bread. So cereal, raw oats, slices of bread, crackers, like I have it all. I love it. But instead of just having that, it's probably going to be more beneficial if I actually sat down with it on a plate, maybe added some salmon or added a little bit of chicken or added some peanut butter or something that was going to be a little bit more filling enjoyed it as a snack in its own right rather than just picking at pieces of bread and then not feeling like I have to eat later on down the line. Again, it's just an example, but I hope that's illustrating what I'm trying to say a little bit better. I mentioned this in one of my other videos as well, but if you have a personal trainer and your goal is to lose weight and they're looking at you, they shouldn't be handing you a meal plan telling you exactly what to eat unless they are a dietitian or a nutritionist, but what they can do is help you to find the tools that are gonna work for you in order for you to stay in a consistent calorie deficit and help you stay accountable to those. So they can make suggestions and they should be helping you work this stuff out rather than telling you what you should eat and that's it. So anyway, before I talk any longer, I'm gonna let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it has helped. Let me know what your thoughts are down below and if you try any of the meals, also let me know. Three more things that are important in weight loss is make sure you stay hydrated, make sure you're prioritizing your sleep, and also the key is consistency. I don't think I could ever say it enough. You guys know it if you've been watching my videos. All right, I hope you have an amazing day, and I will see you guys in the next video.